the recent massacre at a Uvalde elementary school really hit close to home for me because my grandmother used to teach at that particular elementary school in Uvalde. My name is Laura Hurd, and I'm an attorney in San Antonio, Texas. And I remember when my own children were in elementary school on the morning of 9-11-2001, when the Twin Towers fell, and how difficult it was to explain to the children what happened when it was difficult for me to comprehend myself and how difficult it was to make the children feel safe when the world felt so, like such a scary place for everybody. And so I have nine tips on how to talk to children when scary things happen. I learned most of these from a publication of the Institute of Behavioral Science out of uh, University of Colorado at Boulder. And I, I thought I'd share these with you because it, it is something that, you know, children are going to be understandably scared about. They're going to be scared to go back to school, even if they aren't in Uvalde. And so everyone's talking about it. It's in the media. It's something you need to talk to your children about. First tip, before talking to your children, evaluate your own emotions. How are you feeling about the situation? You've got to remain calm yourself in order to convey that calmness to your child. Take deep breaths, label your own emotions, acknowledge how you're feeling, say a prayer, talk to a friend, do what it takes to help you feel grounded and calm before you talk to your child. Children are very good at sensing when adults are upset. Even though you don't say anything, they know when you're upset about something. And so they need your warm presence, not your fear. They need to know that they feel safe. Two, make a goal for the conversation. Clarify in your mind that your goal is to make your child feel safe, not just to share a bunch of facts with them, and to give them a safe place to share their feelings with you about what's going on, that they, they, they can share their questions and talk to you about the situation. As you talk, keep coming back to that message of safety and willingness to talk about the situation. That needs to be repeated in the conversation. Just share simple facts about what happened and then remember to keep it brief and age appropriate. Third, then ask, open-ended questions. That means questions that don't have a yes or no answer or have the answer implied in the question. Ask things like, how do you feel about this? What have you heard that happened? And um, things like, what are you feeling? What are you wondering? Do you have any questions? Those kind of questions will require an in-depth response and, and it'll require them to think and process and communicate what they're feeling. It may be a little difficult for them. They may not know how to put it in words. So give them time and remember that sometimes when you don't know the answers to what they're asking or you don't know how to respond to what they're saying, it's helpful to just ask them another question. Five. Validate the child's feelings and let them know that they're normal. Let them know that it makes sense for them to feel that way, that they can trust their own respective perspective and feelings. And five, reflect the child's words back to them. Don't, don't um, put it in adult terms, but summarize what they said in their own words. That shows them you're listening and what they said was important to you and that you have time for them. Um, six, be comfortable with silence. That also shows that you had time for them. Go, go slow, pause often. This helps the child to take the time to process what they're feeling and to put it into words and to know that you're really listening to them. Seven, keep it short. Multiple short conversations are better than one long one. 
don't let it become a lecture. Make sure you're doing more listening than talking. A, monitor and be aware of how much media your children are exposed to. As adults, it's really easy for us to spend a lot of time in front of the news, the TV, the social media, finding out more and more about every detail of what happened. But that's not healthy for the children. They need the security of knowing that they're safe and constant reminders of danger is not going to help them feel safe. Um, so, you know, talk with them, let them know they can talk to you anytime. Let them know that they can ask you the questions because they're going to hear about it all over the place. But don't let them sit in front of media um, reports of the situation all day long. Make them go out and play. Go do something with them that has nothing to do with this and try to get away from it and, and let them just relax. And five, if your child is having nightmares repeatedly for more than one night, um, if your reassurances aren't helping them to relieve their anxiety, then get professional help. Don't let it go too long without seeking the help of a professional to help your child process this situation. It's important for them not to internalize and and continue to feel anxious over a long period of time. I hope this helps and um, I hope that your children are safe.